guys welcome to public void geek this is Sanam and today we are going to see how to integrate chart boost ads into your iOS Sprite Kit game using Xcode and of course Swift 3 yes, let's open Xcode and let's create a new project new Xcode project here I'm gonna start off with a Sprite Kit game so select game click next and now enter the project name I'm just gonna put chart boost demo for teams I have selected my team you can if you have please select it if not click on none for organization I'm gonna put it as com.example so that the bundle identifier becomes com.example.chart boost demo language is gonna be swift I'm not going to select Objective C as this tutorial is all about Swift and Chart Boost. For game technology, it's going to be Sprite Kit. And for devices, it's going to be Universal or iPhone or iPad. I'm going to go with default, which is Universal, and all the default settings. Just if you, have, it's up to you if you want to select the unit testing. I'm just going with the default here click on next and wait for a couple of seconds you're gonna see this screen wherein you want to save this project I'm gonna put it into my location which is documents YouTube and tutes and then I'm gonna create a new folder here and yes I'm gonna go with create git repository uh, by default and the new folder and I'm gonna name it as chart boost demo and then hit on create and the project is loading now so this is the default uh, project the default game that comes with your Xcode sprite kit uh, provided by Apple as a sample for you to go through and just get a feel on how it works All right this is the game scene the default scene which comes up and let's try to play this game uh, I'm gonna select iPhone 6s uh, just because it's gonna take lesser memory as compared to 7 and 7 plus uh, yeah I need to enable the uh, developer profile on my Mac uh, I created this separate account just for uh, YouTube so that you can actually see uh, from beginning from scratch that how to you know uh, how to get this chart boost integrated so I've clicked on play it's gonna take some time because it's the first time the code is getting compiled up and it's gonna load up the, the simulator and then the game will be installed as you can see it says build succeeded uh, let's go and check the simulator itself well it looks a little bit big you can resize it using command plus three four or one two whatever you want it's from one to four or I guess five um, you can check it on your own as per your screen size you can set it please note that if this simulator is bigger it's gonna consume more RAM on your host machine or on your Mac so I've selected command plus three uh, so yeah it's gonna take some time here guys I'm gonna pause this video and I'll be back once the simulator is up and we are back so now you can see that chart boost is installed on our simulator and FYI I just set it set the size to command three um, as command two was quite big for the screen so yeah uh, let's open it and let's see what demo Apple has provided to us as you can see hello world it says two nodes 48.0 frames per second just drag and move the cursor on the screen and you will see some effects coming uh, to the game scene and that's all in this game that's all that Apple has provided just a demo for you and we are gonna use the same demo we'll try to put a button over here an SK node and clicking on that it should load the interstitial video 
from chart boost SDK itself all right let's get started so moving back to Xcode I'm gonna create a few folders here I really like to organize the project so I'm gonna create a folder here let's go and right click on chart boost demo and then click on new group and I'm gonna call it as scenes and I'm probably gonna move this one here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a menu screen first so in from menu scene if user goes into the gameplay scene uh, it should load the ad that's the whole idea that's what I'm gonna show you uh, it's up to you how you want to implement in your game what logic you want to use but just for the sake of seeing that how chart boost can be integrated uh, I'm just gonna start with the menu screen so right click on scenes go to new file scroll down and select the sprite kit scene right don't click on sprite kit scene file don't click on particle file or action file directly sprite kit scene if you want to create a new scene use a sprite kit scene make sure you have selected your target as your project which is chart boost demo and I'm gonna call it as main menu and create it great uh, well we have created main menu now we do need to create uh, the reference file or the you know the class file for this particular scene scene I mean the yeah the scene so let's go and create that as well so I'm gonna create new group and I'm gonna call it as classes inside classes another group scenes and inside scenes I'm gonna create a new file which is just gonna be our Swift file and I'm gonna call it main menu scene create done let's also move this file over here so we have our scenes and our scene files over here so we have the class files over here and the scenes file over here inside this one let's also create the class like initiate the class file or probably set up the class file so class main menu scene this will be of type sk scene and it's giving me error because I need to import sprite kit this error will be gone uh, okay so we have uh, imported sprite kit uh, we probably also need to link this file to our scene class so here we have it we just need to link it now just go to this uh, class inspector which is first second third and fourth from left and second from right and enter the name of your class file main menu scene hit enter and now this this particular scene file is linked with your main menu scene file All right uh, if you run the project now you won't see any difference even if you have named it as main menu that doesn't mean it will come as a main file or as a main screen uh, because we need to do few more changes to bring it up as a main main scene in our app so uh, run the project let's just wait for a couple of seconds
as you can see it has come up to the same window again the same scene the old one because we haven't told the app yet that which is the main scene so we'll do that later on don't worry uh, let's first get started with chart boost itself so to integrate chart boost uh, chart boost itself has not provided any uh, you can say any SDK directly compatible to Swift but you can use some bridging headers to uh, to use the objective C uh, SDK into Swift and we're gonna see how to do that so just go to your browser Safari or Chrome just open it up and I've already opened the page but I'm gonna show you how to load this page or how to reach to this particular URL so go to Google and just type chart boost swift SDK the very first link click on it and it's gonna redirect you to this particular screen both are same you can see so here Chartboost says that you can use the SDK provided for Swift but it's actually just a wrapper and it uses uh, Objective-C at the back end so you can like you'll still have to use the bridging headers as you can see over here add a bridging header to use it into your Swift project so we're gonna do that uh, let's just follow these steps one by one uh, you need to have a Chartboost account. Yes, I'm not going to go through and teach you how to create an account or how to create a project in Chartboost. Yes, you need to create a project in your Chartboost account. From there, you will get uh, your ID and your your app ID and your signature ID for, for this particular uh, app uh, that you need to put into your project so that ads could load up. Right, we're gonna start with this particular part uh, where you need to, you know, uh, integrate the uh, chart boost framework. So I've already downloaded it. I'm gonna show you here. Uh, here it is inside downloads. I've downloaded uh, and I've also extracted. So if you go here, you have these files available. Uh, yeah. So let's just see what it says. It says unzip the SDK package and drop the chart boost framework into your Xcode project. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna put it somewhere here. So just do it like this. Make sure you have uh, selected your project and copy items if needed as you can see it says check mark the copy items if needed option this creates a local copy of the framework for your project which keeps your project organized so i'm going to create this i'm going to check this check this and click finish just wait for a minute or two and you will see chart boost framework Just do one more thing command shift B this will build the project again and it will compile the chart boost framework for us right let's go here chart boost demo the blue where you have the project settings just go down and make sure you have chart boost dot framework integrated another thing it asks is to have store kit foundation core graphics and UI kit so let's add them as well search for core graphics here you go core graphics add then it says foundation let's go and search for foundation add and then core core graphics we have added foundation we have added store kit add store kit and then the UI kit
so we have completed this step one where we need to add these frameworks in order for chart boost to work properly in our project next one is to add a bridging header file into our project and then we need to import these particular uh, frameworks as well into our project so let's do that now so in order to create bridging header basically what bridging header does is it will link your objective c frameworks or objective c code and make it usable into your swift program or project right so let's create a bridging header file over here in order to create a bridging header file all we need to do is go to this chart boost demo right click create a new file and this time we're going to create a header file click next select your target don't forget this and let's call it so this has to be exactly the same how I am typing here except for the project name so first of all look here what your project name is it has to be exactly the same if there is a space then give a space between the words here I haven't given any space it's chart boost demo so I'm gonna type it like that chart boost demo after that hyphen bridging hyphen header please remember to write it exactly the same it's gonna be your project name hyphen bridging B capital hyphen header H capital and then create and here is your bridging header file which will bridge the objective C code and your uh, Swift code so inside this as mentioned here we need to integrate few things and we're gonna integrate them now or we're gonna write them now so let's start it's gonna be hash or pound import UI kit UI kit dot H so we are importing those header files from these frameworks right so let's just copy and paste these and these are it's one two three four and we have one two three four done so we have added these let's do command B to build it quickly it's gonna give some error here I believe if not good good so okay one more thing that we need to do is we need to link this bridge bridging header file into our project so let's do that now go to this chart boost demo configuration page and go into build settings and type in bridging header and set all here you go you can see that we have bridging header which is empty so we need to integrate this so one thing we can do is first of all hit enter command C so that we copy the file completely the file name at least properly and then go in here and we need to type a few things so I'm gonna tell you first thing that we're gonna do is dollar put a dollar sign bracket and type project underscore tir it's gonna give the project directory and then slash and then try to put this dot h command a command c enter now you need to just make sure that this is completely correct so this is the user documents youtube tubes chart boost demo chart boost demo and let me try to remove this. Yeah, chart push demo, chart push demo, chart push demo, hyphen bridging, hyphen header dot h. So if we go in here and we go to documents, YouTube, tutes, chart push demo, chart push demo, 
and you can see there is a problem so we have chart boost demo chart boost demo and then there's a file which is not present here why because it's actually present over here here you go so we need to add one more chart boost demo folder so let's do that now and this, this should work now so let's see dudes chart boost demo chart boost demo and then we have this chart boost demo which we have already mentioned now and inside this we have this bridging header file which is chart boost demo hyphen bridging hyphen header dot h let's try to build this command b and if there is no error then our bridging header file is integrated and as you can see build has succeeded successfully so no problems here uh, let's move forward and let's try to see what's the next step here see guys I can actually do this and you know just write down all the code for you but I actually want to show you how you can you know follow the documentation of chart boost and how you can integrate it because today it's swift 3 tomorrow it's going to be swift 4 their new sdk is going to come out we don't know what they're going to do the changes and and how much you know code difference will be there or the integration will be different or not we're not sure about that so i just want to make sure that you guys actually learn that how we are following the documentation and how we are integrating it in our project so moving to point number three which says initialize chart boost in your did finish launching with option method so why we are integrating it here or why we are adding it here because we want these videos or our ads to be you know initialized when the app is loading itself at the very first startup this gives us the option to to you know cache these ads initially so that when actual ad is called it just comes from the uh, cached uh, videos not making a network call every time so this will actually reduce the network calls and the data consumption and also it will improve the app speed and performance so let's do this now <clears throat> And you should see this warning which says you must initialize chart boost so we can record boot ups of your game. If you do not initialize chart boost, you will not be eligible for to run advertising advertising campaigns. So yeah, one more uh, benefit of you know putting it here is that let's say tomorrow if you want to uh, run ads for your game into their network, let's say there's another app where you want your 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 games ads to be presented chart boost actually wants to know that if your game let's say if your ads are running and i'm playing one game and from there i found the ad of your game and i downloaded it right uh, and if i don't open it the the advertiser or yeah the publish i mean yeah the publisher will not will not get the money so it's it's a very simple process you would not want to pay if somebody has not downloaded so what's the best way to know so chat chart boost says that after downloading the game a user should open the game and play it so that that thing has to be has to be checked somewhere so this is where uh, chart boost will check whether your game was opened or not after downloading and also it helps us in caching as i told before so let's set it up now So for this, we need to go to our app delegate dot swift file. This is the file where, uh, which is called every time the your app or your game is booted up. So here it says, do it in did finish launching with options, which is the very first one. Did finish launching with options. So we just need to integrate something over here, and let's do that now. So you have UI get integrated and this is what we need to write now just above just give some space here 
and let's see what it wants. Right, this is the line that we need to copy. So just copy it as it is. And you need to add your app ID and your chart boost app signature. This is what is required. Uh, of course, there is some change here, so you just double click it, and this is how it should be chart boost or start. Then in brackets with app ID, this is this is something that you should be getting it in from your chart boost account. Same here, and keep the delegate as nil. So part number three is already done. Don't forget to change this in your code, and then. Here is what we need to see whether you want to show an interstitial video or you want to show a rewarded video. We are just going to see how to um, implement interstitial and for rewarded the implementation or the the app, the ad loading concept is still the same. The only thing is that you need to put in some extra uh, code that what you want to reward to a user after the video has completed. So. So let's say you want to give some extra life, some extra points after user has successfully watched the video. So then you need to use this particular video. We're going to go with interstitial, which is the normal video or a static full screen page with the ad. And in order to show it, this is what you need to copy. Let's do that. And I'm just going to put it over here. Let's just put it over here. Yeah. Or let's do one thing. So how do we want to show it? We want to show it when the game starts, right? After we click, after we reload the game play scene. Yeah. So let's, let's do it over here. Did move to function which is the same like view did appear so I'm gonna put it over here chart boost dot show interstitial and then the location these locations um, there are various locations available uh, like home screen pause screen game over screen and all these locations are available it's up to you which one you wanna where you wanna put it and I'm also going to do one more thing. I'm going to, after this one, I'll put chart boost dot cache interstitial and then the location. Location is going to be CB location home screen. Why home screen? Because that's what I'm doing here. I'm I'm using the home screen ad so I just want to cache that home screen ad over here right again it says replace your app ID and your app signature ID and yeah done so this is what we had we all needed to do in order to integrate the ad, let's just do command build to make sure there are no errors. Great. I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to go and get my chart boost app ID and app signature. I'm not going to show the screen again because these are my IDs. So I'm not going to show them here. But yeah, for demo purpose, I will put it so that we can actually see that the code is working right and before that uh, once I come back and after I put the app ID and the app signature code here uh, we are also going to do some changes so that our main menu scene uh, comes up first and after clicking on a button we load the game scene the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can give some 10-15 seconds uh, time frame for the ads to be cached and then when we load the actual game the ads are gonna pop up okay guys I've added the uh, the app ID and the app signature uh, to the to the project and let's continue so 
gonna make it full screen better yeah Let's minimize yeah so till now uh, we have added the chart boost integration all we need to do now is when we load the app uh, it should go to the the main screen from there we press a button and then it loads the game itself and before we could start playing the game the ad should pop up that's all we need to do uh, just the basic thing uh, I believe most of you already know who are into who are adding chart boost right now means you have already developed your game or probably about to finish the game uh, so yeah uh, but for the sake of the video I'm still gonna show it to you so let's start uh, so I'm gonna go to this game view controller uh, let's just create one more class over here and I'm gonna call it uh, game controller and I'm gonna move this here actually I should name it game view controller uh, view controllers view controllers yeah so we have now yeah all looks good okay let's continue so we can view controller and we are into this view controller this is again uh, default code provided by Apple we're not gonna change a lot into this uh, here you can see the file named game scene so it's this one uh, not sorry sorry not this one it should be this one so game scene and our file that we want to load or the scene that we want to load is main menu so let's change this main menu and let's try to run this stop and run building the project let's see if it has done some changes signing and build and let's see now voila we have the main menu scene loaded up uh, let's do some minor changes let's just add a, a button so this is the main menu scene uh, I'm just gonna do oh let's just let's just uh, yeah let's just name this as main menu done now called main menu uh, so we'll go down to this one uh, same like your option in when you when you you know you do your normal Swifty project so I'm gonna go to object library and I'm just gonna copy this color sprite or drag this color sprite just at the middle of the scene and let's resize it to 200 pixel 200 width and height so I'm not just I'm not gonna do some fancy stuff here let's just call this as play button right so this is gonna be our button if you have any play button image just put it into the assets and you can load it from here right. like something like this okay let's do this so we have this now and make sure that our scene is scene class or the scene has the class file integrated which is this one and let's try to run this uh, nothing's gonna happen right now except for the spaceship coming over here it won't still load the actual game so and it works great now all we need to do is clicking on this spaceship it should load the actual game so let's go back to game scene main menu scene main menu so this is the file the class file we haven't done anything into it let's just modify it now and and do what is required so so I'm just gonna start up with a normal loop uh, sorry let's just do like this uh, touches begin inside this so this one will be called whenever we touch uh, on the screen or tap on the screen so here I'm gonna 
start with the loop so for so for loop for touch in touches and then let location is equal to touch dot location in self so within this scene itself wherever we touch we need to know where where we are touching and then accordingly we will uh, perform the action we don't want game to be loaded uh, if we touch outside the spaceship so we need to know the location of the spaceship and if we touch that spaceship then what action has to be performed this is all we need to write in here so if at point point come on if at point location dot name is equal to equal to and the name was play button let's go and verify it let's go to main menu scene it's called play button just copy it and make sure we have done it correctly yeah play button so if we are clicking this particular location then let's try to print Spaceship touched right and then let's try to run this we're gonna see the output here I mean the logs coming over here so let's just wait cool should load now right so we have the spaceship you can see we have nothing printed over here let's try to click this one click and spaceship touched two three four five six seven eight nine ten and we have 10 11 out 10 outputs over here cool so this is working all we need to do is clicking on this we need to open the another scene this is a very common practice I believe you have already implemented in your in your game how you have implemented doesn't matter it should work uh, for for pausing the game for game over scenes for restarting the game this is the common way that we that we implement to, to you know uh, create a button and then perform the action in the game scene so let's do it let scene is equal to and the scene is game scene the default one game scene class and the game scene itself so we are gonna call the, we're gonna check for the class first this is the class and file named is gonna be game so this particular game scene is just the class file and this one is the actual scene over here right let game scene and then enter and scene dot scale mode is equal to dot aspect fill it should fill the whole screen of the device and self dot view dot present scene uh, with a scale transition yeah let's do this and the name of the scene is scene itself and transition is gonna be sk trans you can keep it nil as well if you want i'm just gonna put it sk transition dot uh, door open vertical time is gonna be one second and done and there's gonna be one small thing as well since this is an optional over here we're gonna unwrap it and since we know that this exists so it's safe to unwrap it here there won't be any errors let's just try to build it to make sure that there are no errors 
perfect let's try to run this now and I'm gonna do this and it has loaded the game now I'm just gonna wait for a few seconds to make sure that the ad has loaded ad has downloaded sometimes this could be you know around 5 MB 10 MB or even 30 MB the maximum size that I have seen is around 45 MB of ad you know the ad video but it it's very 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 uh, less you know chances are very less that that it's gonna be 40 or 50 MB it really depends uh, but yeah uh, you should be safe so that's why I said you should always cache the the videos so that it, it won't affect the gameplay so it's only going you can also set a delegate method wherein you can say that if the ad is already available that means it has already been cached then show the ad so that's something again you can go ahead and check the documentation just a couple of lines of code that you need to add uh, so hopefully the ads are loaded now but let's check so I clicked on this and it should yeah it's loading up and you can see the ad has loaded successfully Don't worry, most of the ads on chart boost. Uh, it's not like Google that you know you 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 view the ad and it's gonna block your account. It's not gonna happen like that because most of the ads uh, you will be paid only if user clicks on this install button and downloads it, downloads the game and opens it. So that's the time that you will be paid. Uh, but yeah, there are chance, there are you know scenarios wherein just just watching the ad uh, you'll probably earn some dollars but uh, probably some cents but most of the time 99% of the time it, you'll only earn if user clicks on install button so you can click on close and now you can start playing the game that's it guys uh, we have integrated chart boost successfully in the swift 3 uh, well the whole reason I wanted to create this video first before any of the uh, the complete uh, you know uh, courses is because when I was developing my games um, I was using AdMob my AdMob account got blocked because of some reason I don't know why uh, I never clicked on any of the ads in fact my AdMob ads were um, test ads as per their policies but still it got blocked so I had to switch to chart boost uh, and I was really finding very difficult to get uh, a straightforward, you know, tutorial to uh, or some sample code on how to integrate it properly. So yeah, this is the way you integrate Chart Boost. I hope you you learned from this video. And if you have any queries, please do drop put it in the comments below and do like this video, uh, give a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you in another video. Till then, goodbye from Public Void Geek.